this video, we're going to talk about renting an apartment in Germany and everything you need to know around that. We will be talking things like how to find an apartment, what to look out for, what peculiarities are different in Germany when you rent an apartment versus other parts of the world, what a contract has, and so much what more. What documents you need, and yes. So much more. So this is going to be a very long video, but we hope it's a good one for you. So, I'm Jen. And I'm Yvonne. And we're from SimpleGermany.com, where we help expats settle into life in Germany more. Smoothly. <laughs> so, um, why did we decide to create such a long video? Well, because we want to provide the ultimate resource for you out there looking for an apartment in Germany. We yeah. know it's not an easy task. Um, and there are some things that work differently in Germany than in other countries. So, this is our effort to show you what those are. And we hope it's helpful. So, a few disclaimers. Number one is that this is general information. By no means we are retail uh, people or... You mean real estate? Real estate. <laughs> Exactly. Real estate people and things might differ uh, from city to city, village from to flat village. to flat, to be honest. Yeah. So this is just general information. So you have an overview of what to expect when you try to find an apartment in Germany. Thing number two is that, of course, finding an apartment in any big city, whether that is in Germany or in the US or in any country, it's always a big deal and sometimes very hard. By experience from friends here in Germany, we know that the two cities that is the hardest to find an apartment in Germany, it's Berlin and Munich. So just keep that in mind. So you have to be patient with the process. Another thing is that because of the length of this video, you might notice that on the, how do you call this, on the scroll of how the video is going, there are going to be timestamps. There are going to be timestamps, <laughs> which you can jump from topic to topic. To find the topic and the timestamp, just open the description box below and there we will have a list of all the topics and the minute we start talking about that. So feel free to jump around because uh, we will pack this in different little chapters. Yeah. Another thing is that, uh, what do I have here? Oh yes, all the links and things that we will mention will also be in the description box below. We will not repeat this again, so just keep that in mind. Yeah. Open that description box and you will find all the information. And we've needed. also written a 4,000 plus word uh, detailed guide yes. on simplegerman.com that of course is also linked below where you can um, also read about it and have a few more um, tips and clues uh, additional to this video. Exactly. So that out of the way, let's <laughs> jump, jump right into in. it. So first things first, the question that everyone asks is like, where do I even look for an apartment in Germany? Online. <laughs> of course, right? But like what online? Like So uh, most likely or not online. And uh, most of you, I mean, it's, it's different, right? Whether you're looking still outside of Germany or inside of Germany, um, but still the, the steps are similar. And there are, of course, um, the big sites, the big websites, proper, German property, rental property websites. Um, we will look at two of them. The biggest one, um, at, they claim that they're a market leader and also the, was the first one that came to my mind, is immobilienscout24.de. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also Immonet, Immowelt and a few others. Um, that are all part uh, of the article um, and we are going to look at those a bit later, right? Yes, exactly. So that is pretty much online is your best bet. We will find that a lot of apartments require this thing called the Shufa. Shufa, if you don't know, it's the credit score keeper uh, institution. It's a credit record. Credit record in Germany. Yeah. We have a whole video about the Shufa that we will create and will be released in a few weeks. Um, but long story short, they will require a, a credit record. But you cannot get a credit record if you do not register first in the city and you cannot register in the city if you don't have an apartment. So that is a chicken and egg situation that a lot of foreigners or internationals uh, face when they move to Germany. So that is why solution number two is that when you look for apartments online, there are specific apartments that you can find to beat this um, chicken and egg situation. Correct. Yeah. If you cannot, or you have, don't have the patience or the time to go via the traditional route, um, then you can uh, opt for a furnished flat mm -hmm. to start with. There are a, a few, I would say a couple big, big advantages of that. Uh, number one, you jump over the chicken and egg situation because <laughs> these um, providers uh, providers are like housing anywhere, uh, nest pig, wonder flats, yeah, and a few more. Um, they don't ask for a shufa. Um, because they know the issue <laughs> um, and you can register with those apartments so you can you know already produce your um, credit score until you actually move to a long-term flat so that is one big uh, advantage and the other one is of course it's furnished it also has internet it has uh, everything um, it's a full package um, service so you don't have to worry about it in your first weeks uh, and you can really focus on the important parts when moving here. Yeah, so all the bureaucratic stuff. <laughs> also, an additional benefit is that because it's these are temporary contracts usually, right? Because these are meant to be 
just use temporarily? Uh, or? Most you have a minimum amount of time that you have to be there or rent them for two to three months. Okay. Yeah. But that being said, you can use also those two to three months to explore the area around you. A, figure out if this is a neighborhood you want to continue living in or discover new neighborhoods in the place that you move to. So to pretty much figure out where you want to live. So that's exactly. a pro. Choose your hood. Yeah. Negative side though with this option is that because they are furnished and provide everything already, they tend to be a little bit more expensive than actually renting a flat the traditional way, let's say. It. Yeah. However, like already mentioned, if you cannot find an apartment where you, if you cannot find an apartment where Shufa is not required, then this is a perfect option because then you do the Anmeldung, wait a few months for your Shufa score to like raise settle in, yeah. to settle in usually it's like two to three months and with that shufa score then you can find a furniture yeah. plan i just realized that we forgot to mention something in the number one step yes. which is so important um so why are we saying here furnished flats so most flats in germany that you find in the traditional websites are unfurnished yes and we will go into that in detail in the next chapter of this video which is like the peculiarities that we need to know but that's yes. a fair point yes yeah. Um, so, and then what happens also, okay, so let's say these are perfect options for finding apartments to mm -hmm. live alone. If you want to share an apartment with someone, there's actually specific websites for that Correct. too. Yeah. So a shared flat in German is called um, Wohngemeinschaft or short WG. WG. Exactly. Um, and uh, they're quite popular, especially in bigger cities, especially in Berlin hmm. um, or for students. Um, or just also. also, you know, when you when you are a young professional and um, maybe your re uh, your rent uh, your <laughs> your salary is not as high yet, um, then shared apartments are very very popular. And uh, for that, you usually also don't need a shufa. Um, usually, I'm not saying usually, always. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, and uh, of course, rent is a bit cheaper than if you own your own apartment. Exactly. Or if you not own, but if you rent your own a apartment. private apartment there Hello. you go yeah exactly um okay so then there are also as what you said yes there are specific ah, websites yes. to search for them <laughs> like wg gesucht um, we can also link them below yeah and also they're in the article now the other option maybe the most traditional option before online thing was a thing is obviously to hire a real estate agent correct to help you find an apartment I personally have never used this option uh, because I just find it is more of a hassle than a benefit because if it I, depends. yeah, it depends really what you're looking for. But that, as far as we know, um, if you are the one requesting the real estate agent to find an apartment for you, then you are the one to pay them their so commission. So it's not as is... far as we know, but it's actually a law. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the law states that whoever hires the real estate agent pays the uh, commission. Hmm. Uh, in German, it's called Provision. Mm -hmm. um, so you will see in the traditional websites um, where there are listings for flats and apartments, you will often see uh, that they are managed by or, or are listed through real estate agents. In that case, the landlord hires the real estate agent mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about it for you. Um, you will not pay a commission to to contact this listing and visit this listing and hopefully rent that listing. Yeah. Um, however, if you go to a, a real estate agent and really say specifically, I have my apartment needs to have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, F, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, and you hire this agent, you will pay for the agent. Yeah, which is not cheap, right? Yeah. As far as, yeah, yeah. As, far as we know. <laughs> okay, and then like the maybe not so traditional way, and I've seen a few friends uh, actually get apartments this way, is to join a Facebook group. So it could be in, there are Facebook groups um, that are like for newcomers in a city, which is usually all in German. And there are, of course, expat Facebook groups. And in either group, usually when people are leaving a city, they take pictures of their apartment and they uh, want to find the re -rent next renter, it. Yeah. re rent it, right? So they're like, okay, I'm leaving this apartment. This is how much I paid. If you rent it from me, then you can buy the furniture and the kitchen peculiarities, which we will go in the next uh, So chapter. there are two uh, reasons why people do that. Um, one is obviously to resell you the furniture that they bought mm -hmm. um, because the landlord typically wouldn't take care of that. And um, maybe they also negotiated with the landlord instead of the usual three month um, period uh, for, for quitting ah. the contract. They already need to leave within a month. So, hmm. you know, they will take care of finding a new person to rent the flat so they can get out of the contract earlier and the landlord doesn't lose money. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, again, a lot of people paste, uh, paste, uh, post uh, on Facebook groups these kind of apartments. Yeah. Um, okay. 
So that's where you can find apartments. Now let's talk about the peculiarities of finding an apartment in Germany, which this is the fun part, I must say. I, you could just go start with your fo famous favorite one. No, I have an order here of my list, otherwise we get confused. Okay. So we start with, actually, we have received multiple questions, actually, from um, viewers <laughs> and subscribers uh, regarding, like, what to expect when you rent an apartment. The first one that we got is, like, are bathrooms included? Yes. And that is actually by law. Yes. By law here, I have a law that passed in 1999 that is called the Bundesverwaltungs... No, no that's not the law. That's the, the court that oh. passed the law. The Bundesverwaltungsgericht. <laughs> there you go. So that court in 1999 said that uh, definitely part of an apartment to rent, you need to have a, a working sink, a toilet, and a bath. Plus a few other things, but we're well, talking a bath about or the bathroom. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so, yes, every German apartment will come with a toilet, a sink, and a shower or bathtub. Um, now, each state in Germany has like their little sub laws and whatsoever. And um, hmm. we think also in Berlin there are some listings that might not include that. That's mm, from my standpoint super shady. So um, if, if you see something like this, just know this is not okay. And I personally would not even consider looking further into it. Yeah, because also, uh, especially if you're like a foreigner, right? And you rent an apartment without a bathroom, like what are you supposed to do? No. Hire someone to build that bathroom for you? That's like super expensive. By and it takes way, time. It takes time and, and any construction in Germany is super expensive. expensive. Yes. So don't get into that mess. If you find an apartment with no bathroom, no pictures stay of a bathroom, from whatever, stay away from it. That's yeah. the easiest advice, right? Um, and now it's my favorite one. <laughs> my favorite one. It's the vice versa situation because... <laughs> Kitchens are not what always included hell? in Germany. So kitchens are not included in Germany. So when you see an apartment listing that has pictures of a kitchen, that doesn't mean you're going to get the kitchen. Sometimes that just means that this is how the kitchen looked like and the renter before you, that's how they built it. And most likely they're going to leave with that kitchen. I mean, they're going to take that, rip the kitchen apart and take it with them. And you're empty, you're, you're with a empty room where all the different like uh, appliances are supposed to be and they're gone so let me explain yes tell me why <laughs> I, I was talking with uh, with the uh, with Sean a, with, with Sean yeah he's uh, we'll talk about him also later but he uh, has this podcast uh, Germany the Germany experience super cool podcast that you can check out and we were talking with him and it's like he's like that's the most inefficient thing that I've seen in Germany but there's a reason for it yes so hmm. The reason for it being um, is based on the, the tenant laws and, um, and rental laws in Germany. They're very, very pro-tenant um, and contra landlord, I would say. <laughs> so meaning when you rent a flat, mm -hmm. sorry, uh, itchy. So it's okay. um, when you rent a flat, you pretty much rent that thing for life. Um, I mean, you have the option to rent it for life. And Germany is a country that is very, um, it's a renter country, rental, rental country. So less than half of the population or, or households, better said, uh, in Germany um, are in own property. And that is super low. Like the EU average is 70%. Ah, but I was corrected because here in the research that we did, I have this here, it's 57% of all households in Germany were rented. While 43%... Yeah, I said were... less than half are in ownership. Ah, yes. yes. Okay, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Okay. Other can, way around. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Germany is a rental country um, because also of the laws. So it's not uncommon that um, when you rent a flat, that you stay your entire life in that flat if mm. you're a person that also stays with the same job and just likes your neighborhood where you grew up in. And for that reason, um, if I know I'm going to stay in this flat 10, 20, 30 years, I would invest a lot more money in a state-of-the-art, like high-quality kitchen, than a landlord, landlord would ever do. So that is mm. the number one reason. So it's very, like, historically um, related. I mean, nowadays, this whole furnished flat thing is becoming more and more popular, also mm -hmm. because, obviously, more foreigners are coming, there's more fl fluctuation, digital nomads, all that, um, yeah, yes. modern living, I would say. Yeah. Um, but traditionally speaking, um, you treat a flat as if it's your own. And with that, of course, comes also appliances in terms of kitchen. Yeah. And so since it's a state-of-the-art kitchen, when you mm -hmm. move, it was expensive, but it probably doesn't have the value anymore that you paid for it. So you take it with you because you cannot afford or don't want to spend another thousand euro, uh, hmm. thousands of euros in On kitchen. You're like fridge and, 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 yeah. and, and stove I mean, and whatnot. Kitchens, if you, when you come to Germany, you see you have like the IKEAs of kitchens, like your furniture <laughs> houses that are just... A, for kitchens and they cost up to 15 20,000 euros. Yeah, or even more, right? If you're yeah. super fancy. So then you have 
multiple, we have four options when it comes to a kitchen. Either the first one is you buy a kitchen from the previous owner. Yeah. That means the owner says, you know what? I don't want to take the kitchen with me, so I'm going to sell it for you. This is when the previous renter um, is going to rent the apartment for the landlord. And this is the case that you had, right? So you bought the kitchen from the guy that left this apartment. Yes. And this was eight years ago. Yes. And until now, everything's nothing, still working. Nothing, nothing has broken, so everything's still working. So luckily, right? Um, the second option is that you can search apartments with a kitchen already included. And these are usually uh, E, B, B K. Exactly. Einbauküche. Exactly. That means a built-in kitchen. Yeah, which we will go more into details about the abbreviations and what to look out for. The third option is to rent a fully furnished apartment. This one usually also comes with a couch uh, and other furniture, bed, bed and cupboards, the kitchen, yeah. everything. And the fourth option, which is not the cheapest option, is to buy a kitchen for yourself. So you have to know in Germany, kitchens are usually built in kitchens. So a kitchen is really tailored made to the apartment owner. I've had friends and also from uh, your sister, right? We know that a kitchen can take up to two months until it yes. arrives because it's so custom made. So the cupboards, the appliances and everything takes its sweet time so you are, see yourself two months here like hopefully even like having a camping cooker or i don't Pretty know what much, yeah. and uh, really swinging it but yeah. that's a very swinging it winging it winging but it. that is a, a very german thing yeah yeah maybe we find uh, we can show uh, your sister's kitchen pre and post mm -hmm. like before she got the kitchen and after she got the kitchen so you have an idea of how it is so those are your options when it comes to kitchen um okay so number three which is kind of kitchen rela uh, related is obviously the appliances are not included kitchen doesn't just necessarily mean the cupboards but also the appliances in it yeah but i think with the appliances we were more referring to uh, a washing machine um because which strangely enough I, it, it's a european thing not only a german thing the washing machine is in the kitchen yes i was going to say because <laughs> most of the times the washing machine is either in the kitchen or yeah. in the bathroom yeah or a basement if that's if that's there yeah um so but the kitchen is a very common place uh, just because there's the space sometimes um <laughs> and just because yeah there's it's furnished or there's a kitchen doesn't mean it might have a washing machine yeah uh, for example our washing machine is in the kitchen yeah. and also for you to know dryers are not um a thing in germany we i think have them i grew up with one but i i don't even want one it's not needed and it just sucks energy yeah that's I, i've heard that germans believe dryers are bad but anyway so dryers if you're used to having a washing and drying combo it's not that common to find that same combo obviously if you have your own apartment that you're renting you can obviously buy yourself a dryer you can still buy them if you have the space for it if yeah. you have the space for it um but you can still and maybe the installation for it yeah right? exactly yeah so yeah. that's the thing also number four is the deposits are very common yes which are called in german kaution exactly ah, very good yes so uh, and this is a big uh, a big thing because i've heard multiple times from from experts that wow i did not know how expensive mm. it is to rent an apartment in germany and not in terms of the actual rent, rent? that you pay yeah. but how expensive mm. it is to move in because 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 <laughs> you need to pay a set deposit which um by law again cannot be more than three times the rent the cold rent we will go into the detail there a, a bit later on yeah um but that can easily be a couple thousand euros that you basically have to have part and be able to park it and still have enough money left to to to, to start your life yeah um and hmm. the deposit you literally park it it's like a, a guarantee for the landlord in case you break something or you um don't pay your rent the couple last couple of months before mm. you leave whatever thing might happen uh, the landlord parks it keeps it and uh, pays it back to you when you move leave. out yeah. and that is very common also like you don't have to worry that you don't get it back um again it happens but it happens rarely uh, usually there the, tr the trustworthiness there is very very high yeah unless you have like a very kind of like not so nice landlord um, or you really break something I or mean, you really break you know. something then the landlord might take some time to to return it or return just part of it, right? Yeah. But generally speaking, you get your caution back. Within the next, like within two weeks or something like that. Yeah, yeah. or up to a month. I received yeah. mine up to a month after I left, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, another interesting thing is that the floors in a building <laughs> are named differently, right? Yeah. So this, I think so, it's mainly for the US. I, or, I, or you are North America. North America. I'm not sure. But what is the first floor for you? So for me, it's the first floor, like the floor that you walk in and it's the first floor. No, <laughs> it's not. Well, so the, the, the floor that you walk in, the ground floor, is the ground floor. So it's das Erdgeschoss, mm -hmm. like means ground floor. <laughs> so the first floor in Germany is the floor. The, the second actually, floor. The, the, the first floor above the ground floor. So one staircase up. 
which in other countries would be the second floor, right? Yeah. But just so you know, when you see an apartment in the first floor, like as the etage, it's one staircase up. It's actually one stair. Yeah, you need to go up one exactly. level to actually land on that. So level. basically, you have the basement, which is the keller. Then, which is usually storage unit, sometimes also a shared com like a community washing area. Mm, true, um, yeah. If you own a house or you rent a house, um, the basement obviously is, is living space. You can do whatever you want with it. But in a in a flat sense, an apartment sense, it's um, usually storage. Yeah. Um, then you have the Erdgeschoss. Mm, then you have the floor. first floor, second floor, third floor, and so on until you reach the top floor, which is the Dach Dachgeschoss. Yeah. Ah. Right. The Dachgeschoss. We live in a Dachgeschoss. You see here, that is literally the roof that you see. Yeah. Um, and it's called Dachgeschoss. And it, you will also see it written, um, and that just means top floor, under the roof. Yeah, under the roof and oh. above the ground. Okay. And also, in that sense, rooms are calculated also differently. Yes. So, uh, what is a two-bedroom apartment for you? An uh, apartment that has two bedrooms. <laughs> like you said, a two-bedroom And apartment. what else would you expect from a two-bedroom apartment? Well, I would add to that the living room, the kitchen, and the bathroom, I think. Okay. To be honest, I have not searched for apartments outside of Europe, so I'm already a little confused. But I, we've read that this is a confusing yeah. thing, right? So because, in Germany, yes. in Germany, any flat um, or apartment will always have a bathroom and a kitchen. Mm -hmm. And these two do not count as rooms. Okay. Um, however, the living room counts as a room. And of course, any other room, no matter what you use it for, whether it's an office or a bedroom. So every room, except for the kitchen and um, bathroom, counts as a room. So a two-bedroom, we wouldn't even call it bedroom, we would call it two-room two apartment, apartment, zwei Zimmer Wohnung, mm -hmm. um, basically means you have one bedroom and one living room if you choose to use them that way. And what happens if you see 1.5 Zimmer? 1.5 Zimmer is, um, you could technically say like our flat, it's like a very open living um, and when with with one very small additional um, space in it, it's like um, one point. It's like a studio. One point five is more like a studio style. Ah, can you have a two point five? Yeah, it's a bigger studio style. Ah, okay. Yeah. And <laughs> but a three point five. But usually, I mean, if you look at them online, you also see like a layout, and then you can kind of understand the layout of the flat and and uh, the spaces. So if I would want, for example, two bedrooms, like two rooms where I can sleep. Mm -hmm and a living room, I would be looking at a three-room apartment. Correct. Uh -huh. Okay, that makes sense, in a way. Yeah, once you explain it, it makes sense, right? <laughs> Another peculiarity is that um, balcons... Uh, balconies? Balconies. <laughs> sometimes it happens, very rarely. Um, balconies are also a very good asset to have in an apartment. The one downside of our apartment, I say, is the lack we of balcony. We don't have one. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it's so nice when it's sunny and the weather's nice uh, to be out in the balcony and enjoy some fresh air and sunshine. To that extent, though, the things that you can do in a balcony sometimes are quite limiting. Because uh, another thing you should know is that related to balconies come the conversation with neighbors, that neighbors in Germany are also very peculiar. <laughs> this is why. <laughs> also very peculiar. That's a very big generalization here. Not everyone. We have, we're so lucky. We have such nice neighbors, really. However, we've heard also stories from friends and other experts and whatever that they sometimes get into trouble with neighbors because they don't know the rules of Germany, right? Okay. So you might get some written letters like complaining maybe if you're too loud um, after 10 p.m. But going back to the balcony is that if you have a balcony, you might think, oh, I will have a barbecue. And when you have a barbecue, that is not necessarily allowed in the apartment or appreciated by the neighbors. And you might get a letter saying, dude, you cannot use a barbecue. So in the apartments that you can actually have a barbecue in, you would generally have an electrical barbecue, not one with coal, because the one with coal is the one that has Very all the smoke. Yeah. And you will receive complaints, trust me. <laughs> so in that extent, if you want a balcony and you're thinking of a balcony because of a barbecue, just take, keep that in mind. And it's also literally a question of a rental contract. I mean, we will talk about that in detail later. Yeah. Um, but there might be a line um, in the house rules or something, of whether or not it's okay and with what kind of barbecue. Yeah. yeah. And going back, I said like the rules of living in Germany. The number one rule pretty much is that you're not supposed to be loud or make loud noises after 10 p.m. And on Sundays. Yeah. So if you want to drill... Uh, sometimes also in the lunch hours, depends. Yeah. Okay, sometimes, okay. But if you want to drill like a hole because you want to put a new picture on a Sunday, no, no. If you want to, If you want to clean your apartment on a Sunday, let's say with the washing or a loud... Um, vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. 
you might also get comfort. I mean, we can do it. You know, it it really depends uh, where you live and what your neighbors and what are. your neighbors are. But I would say we don't do it that often, and when we do, the neighbors are super nice. We also don't do it at like 5 a.m. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's also a thing. Yes. Okay, so those were the peculiarities of renting an apartment in Germany. So now let's go to the next like chapter of this video, which is now how much does it cost to rent an apartment in Germany? So I already mentioned Sean from the podcast, The Germany Experience. We have a whole episode about like living costs in Germany that you can check out. Again, description in the box mm -hmm. below. Um, and there we talk about uh, also the cost of living in um, Germany in the sense of how much do you pay for rent. rental? Yes. yes, rental costs. Yeah. So according to this, um, there's a very cool website called Numbeo. That's how we pronounce it. We don't know if that's true. Numbeo, Numbeo. I don't Numbeo. know. And I have the numbers here. And according to them, a one bedroom apartment. So they analyze all of Germany. And this is now very careful. This is a very, very general uh, number yeah. that Numbeo um, researched. Um, so don't think you will always find a flat for that amount. Exactly. Yeah. But now I have a question because it says here one bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. Does that mean one bedroom and the living room? No, one bedroom apartment means literally a... Just a living room, a studio. A studio, like you sleep and you have your couch in a bedroom on the same ah, room. Ah, okay, so for one bedroom apartment, like the very small one, in the city center is 750 euros a month. On average. On average. In comparison, though, the average price for the similar apartment that we were talking about, outside of the city center, it says is 570 euros. Yes, so that basically gives you a comparison of how location also impacts price. I mean, anywhere in the world, right? This is not Germany specific by yeah. far. Um, <laughs> and again, these numbers are so, so average. Yes. I mean, you can find apartments for that place. You can find them cheaper, you can find them more expensive. So it depends on your liking and also your, um, uh, how, your own standards, I would say. How, how high your standards need to be for your apartment. Yes, I agree. Okay, so then now we need to obviously touch the topic of Kaltmiete versus Warmmiete. Yes. So when you are looking for an apartment, right, the rental price that you see is what is called the Kaltmiete. Correct. Like on the uh, websites that we're going to go into in a little bit, um, you see first the Kaltmiete, correct? Mm -hmm. Which is not the um, actual price you will pay at, for, monthly for your apartment. Well, hold on. First, Kaltmiete means cold, cold rent. rent. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but if you don't know the name, Yes, right? Kaltmiete is cold rent, and then there is a thing called Warmmiete, warm rent. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what differentiates the two, mm -hmm. and what do you need to look out for? Mm -hmm. So warm rent is going to be the price that is the total amount of your monthly pay for your apartment. So that is actually what you need to budget for. And Warmmiete, warm rent, is cold rent additionally with utilities, mm -hmm. which are Nebenkosten. So utilities get added to the code rent, um, and that is the final price that you will pay. Right. Okay. So then to summarize, you have the Kaltmiete, which is just the rental price of the apartment. Mm -hmm. When you add utilities to that, that's when you get the Warmmiete. Correct. So what is utilities then? Um, what generally, are the Nebenkosten? The Nebenkosten, yeah. Generally speaking, um, there should be heating, okay. there should be water consumption, mm -hmm. there should be um, like uh, garbage um, removal. Um, sometimes, like for us, for example, also the TV cable is included. Mm, okay. Sometimes, like for us, for example, <laughs> also the, the cleaning of the staircase in the house is included. Mm -hmm. um, but that is very individual of the landlord and the place that you live. But generally speaking, heating, water, garbage should be the big, big thing. Oh, interesting. So electricity is not covered. No. Right. And uh, most likely than not, also internet is not covered. Uh, absolutely not, yeah. So on top of the Warmiete, which is like the total amount that you need to pay, you need to consider also money for electricity and the money for your internet consumption. Yes. Um, so talking about the Nebenkosten, and I find this super interesting, is that you don't receive like an invoice or a receipt at the end of the month for like water consumption and heating consumption. No. What happens is that the landlord tells you a monthly price, what is based, I guess, on the average of consumption of the building. And then you pay that monthly, and at the end of the year, they like even it out. So they say, okay, so uh, Jen and Ivan, you, you paid, let's say, 500 euros in a year, <laughs> but in reality, you consumed 550, mm -hmm. so now you owe me 50 euros extra for the extra things mm -hmm. that you cost, that you, that you consume. That is called the Nebenkostenabrechnung. Ah, there you go. And the same goes the opposite way, right? Like if we paid too much and consume less of what we pay, then we get money back from yep. the landlord. Exactly. So for us, it happened one year that obviously when we moved in together, right, because before it was just you living here and then it was you and I, um, that obviously everything raised in consumption because now we're two people. So at the end of that year, we had to pay an extra amount. And then we adjusted our Nevin Kosten for the next year to be a little bit higher so we could have for that. Um, so we prepaid 
pretty much uh, in the the monthly amount we increase our rent a little bit yeah. for the neighbor cost so that that year we didn't have to pay so much um, at the end of the year yeah and that has worked out pretty fine yeah. uh, until the so much that actually the landlord usually gives us some money back at the end of the year yeah, a little bit a little bit like 20 years or so it's not that much <laughs> yeah so that's an interesting thing as well so that's just for you to know um what your rental price will be consisting of yeah yeah exactly so now we're going to actually show you uh in the nope. computer you missed one thing of cost of renting what your favorite not favorite cost Ah, oh, my favorite hidden cost, yes. right? Yeah, that's true. Very good catch. That's why it's hidden. See, like you forget about it. <laughs> and that cost is the... Rundfunkgebühr. <laughs> I need her to say oh, it. Rundfunkbeitrag. <laughs> yeah. It's the broadcasting uh, fee for public television and radio. Yes. And um, it is not part of your rent, so it has nothing to do with it. But by renting an apartment and having mm. your own household, you are obliged of paying this. Yes. So it should be part of your yeah, living budget, rental budget. And it is 17 euro 50 per month. We've recorded an entire video, like we've mentioned before, on the uh, TV tax broadcasting license fee, um, where we go into more detail. Yeah, so check that video out. If you're confused, what the hell are they talking about? We go into full detail about that. But you just need to consider 17 euro 50 additional to all the things that we mentioned as yes. the cost. Whew, okay, that's cool. Um, let's see here now. Okay, so now we're going to actually go into the computer. Yes, exactly. And then uh, Ivan has prepared some examples of, uh, let's pretend Ivan and I are going to look for a new apartment mm -hmm. in Dusseldorf. We don't want to leave this place, right? We're not moving. <laughs> but uh, so to give you an example of what to look out for. Yeah, exactly. So let's jump um, right in and uh, we will start a little uh, screencast right here. Here we are uh, on imonet.de, which is one of the bigger um, websites to find rental property in Germany. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a typical starting page where you're prompted to enter like the city uh, and, and other factors that you're looking for in a flat. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you know this trick yet. If you are in a browser like Chrome, like I am right now, you can right click mm -hmm. and then go to translate to English and ta-da! Everything is in English. Isn't that convenient? Um, so you would enter the city like let's say here we are looking for a place in Düsseldorf um, we want to rent yes we want a flat I mean you could also um, look for other things like a shared apartment for example mm -hmm. but right now we're looking for a flat let's say my budget is 800 euros and this budget here I would say is the cold rent right of uh, 800 um, euros yeah I mean it gives you a range you can still of course um, choose but this yeah. gives you an idea of apartments that are in that range. Yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Then you have um, like the living space uh, from, for example, if you really need a big space, you can say here from 70 square meters onwards. And of course, what we discussed earlier, the rooms. Two plus is very typical. Also, this is so typical that um, you have better chances of finding a flat if you go with less or more rooms. Mm. But of course, more rooms are also more, more expensive. expensive. And yeah. less rooms, obviously, you have less exactly. space. <laughs> um, so then you go find and this is how it would typically look like then. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You get um, already here the first few um, hints, two and a half rooms, 90 square meters. Mm -hmm. So the, the space is always measured in square meters. Mm -hmm. yeah? Um, and the code rent here, rent plus utilities. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going to go back to German because I can show you something. So for example, here you know immediately this flat includes a kitchen. EBK Einbau Küche. In our guide of, um, of this how to rent an apartment in Germany in simplegermany.com, we have a whole list of abbreviations that exactly. you can um have you a can look. have a look and yeah. then you can compare what abbreviations you find on these websites and actually have the words in german and what it actually means in english correct yeah so this is uh you know has a kitchen included but the rest as you can see is unfurnished <laughs> um this one you can see already is under the roof um and it's also unfurnished and here you have garden access oh, that's uh, nice. if it says garden here it doesn't mean that it's your own necessarily but that you might share it with um, other Others. people in the house yeah uh, and this is basically how it will uh, look like and then you get tons of pop-ups and i don't know what um so yeah. you prepared some examples exactly for us, right uh, ah here you see this for example it needs to be renovated yeah so also not all flats that are um, available for rent are renovated already so just look out for um but does that mean i need to renovate it yep Oh, wow. So if I would rent this flat, it's up to me to paint that wall. Yes, and most likely. Yeah, yeah. don't take it. Yeah. <laughs> like, so yes, why? I've prepared a, a few um, listings already. Uh, so I found this one. Um, which that, is nice. Which, wow. is, which is nice. Uh, and if you look through the pictures, oh, look, you have the, it's a Düsseldorf, you see the Rhine. This is like super fancy, super good location. Yeah. Uh, and oh, look at that. I see furniture. Hmm. Aha, interesting. And then if you read properly, you have the word möbliert. 
and möbliert means furnished. Mm -hmm. So here, this is um, a proper German flat with which you can register and live long term that is furnished. So you might also find furnished flats in these portals, not oh. just through the furnished providers. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Although I must say that furniture there looks a little bit funky, but better than nothing, eh? That is up to you. Yes, I just wanted to show you that you can also find furnished flats um, in here. And then you have further information. Wow, so um, look, in that case, like the like the, the Baujahr or the... It's from 1980, yeah. yeah like Which is not actually in Germany that is not so no, old not because old there are all. buildings from like 1904 yeah. and younger, yeah. I would say. But here it uh, also says, for example, Teil und Vollsanier means it's like um, partially uh, or fully renovated. Mm. Yeah. And um, here it tells you again, you have a kitchen included, yeah, mm -hmm. Einbauküche. Um, it's möbliert or Teil möbliert. Okay, so Teil möbliert means partially furnished. Ah, okay. So maybe like a cupboard is missing or, I mean, that is then for you to, to find out further. Mm -hmm. You have access to a basement, to the keller. And, and it's on the first floor above the ground floor. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you also have an elevator. In wow. the house. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah? We don't have an elevator. So let's go to another page, which is uh, Immo Scout or Immobilien Scout24.de, which mm -hmm. is actually the biggest page um, out there with the most listings. Um, same thing, you enter your town, uh, Düsseldorf, uh, you're looking for a flat, Wohnung, yes, and uh, again, the 800 again, euros. 800 okay. euros. Uh, I want uh, from two rooms this time, and I want minimum uh, 50 square meters. And I will look for whatever I have here. Mm -hmm. And then again, I've prepared a few listings. For example, the first one that you see there, which says um, a modern flat in ideal location with a Einbauküche. Again, you have a kitchen included. And in this case, we see on the right hand side that is from this Deutsche Wohn Correct. Wohnen, which is actually a real estate agent yep. that was hired probably by the owner to put this listing online. So in this case, even though it's a real estate agent, remember, you don't pay. The person that hired him to put that listing there should pay for that commission. Exactly. Um, and let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to show you here. Well, it usually um, says the um, caution that you have to pay here. And this is actually too much. So hmm. this is fishy. Because usually, the, or by law, the caution, the deposit, cannot be more than three times the code rent. Yeah. And the code rent here is 670. So if we do real math here, by, <laughs> what, by real math, I mean here Google, uh, six, 670 times three is 2010. And they are asking for 2100. Hmm. Hmm. So I so wonder if they weird. miscalculated or what's going on here. What is even weirder mm. is that you have here the Nebenkosten, but it says here Heizkosten means heating. Um, heating is not included in the utilities, in the Nebenkosten, hmm. and that is unusual. Hmm. And here for the total rent, so the warm rent, it actually says, gives you a price, ZZGL means zuzüglich, so it means additionally yeah. heating cost. But I don't know how much heating is, so yeah. already here I don't know my total price. I would not go for this listing, I'm totally... So I would already find it weird in the sense that first the caution is more than it should be, Second of all, how much, like you say, is heating? And then if I think that the Nevenkosten, then, as we mentioned, there is no electricity provided, right? No internet. And then plus that, the, the, the heating, like, I don't even know how much I'm going to be paying. No, no. So this is in a case where you can um, uh, you need to be really also a bit critical of the listings that you yes, find. Yes, I yeah? agree. So next one. We see it is unfurnished. has a beautiful balcony. And let's see what else we want to look at. Again, it's like some uh, real estate or property mm -hmm. management. And um, oh, here, with the modern, with the modern bad, modern with bathroom, a, with a modern bathroom, so mm -hmm. probably renovated, yes. And here we see in these um, gray tabs, it has a balcony or terrace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you have access to the basement, so again, nice. a storage. You have storage, and you have a kitchen. Nice. So the kitchen nowadays is actually more common to have it included oh, that's than so nice. maybe ten years ago. Yeah, I would say, but still look out like for it. it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And here it says Dachgeschoss, so it's in the top floor. However, it also says second from three, so that is weird. Yeah, so why, why like if it's the, the, the roof floor, then how it's the can top it be the floor, second from so three? it should be the third or three. Maybe there's another attic on top. Maybe there's an attic, yeah. So Who that's knows? a reason to ask, for example, yeah? Exactly. Sometimes you see something like this here, Nutzfläche. So this mm. is actually like a storage unit, so it might be the storage mm. unit in the basement. Ah, that so you have seven, seven square, square meters, meters to store be. your stuff. I mean, that you need to discuss with the landlord. Okay. Ah, and look, I get a garage. 
Uh, you get a garage, correctly. Um, it says here one garage. However, mm. uh, this does not mean that the garage is included in the rental price. Oh. And we'll have a look later whether it is or not. Okay. Um, it also says here no pets allowed. So mm. if you have pets, you should always look out for um, yes or no. Mm -hmm. um, and it also doesn't give you the date from when it's available. So there mm. it literally says nach Absprache means... Um, After we talk, kind exactly, of. Exactly, like up to discussion, pretty okay. much. Okay. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. Um, this is the famous Shufa uh, mm -hmm. that we've discussed. Uh, all of these pages, these property um, pages, will offer you to get it through them. Because, of mm. course, they want to make money with it. <laughs> but it doesn't say here that it is necessary, really. I'll give you another example later where it says necessary. However, just because it doesn't say it's necessary, doesn't mean it isn't helpful for you to land uh. this apartment. Okay, so yeah. actually, if it's not required, Still having the shufa could be a positive and could put you ahead of the others that don't have a shufa. Correct. Maybe. Okay. Yes. All yeah. right. Okay. But here, for example, you would have a chance maybe also without one. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go down. down. Um, Look here. I also have internet. Ah, yeah. Every every listing will tell you the possible speeds of internet you ah, can have. Ah, okay. Because um, yeah, Germany it's um, a very developed country, but internet lines are not oh, that developed not so, yeah. uh, all the time. Yeah. So depending on where you live, you will actually not be able to get high speed internet. So here the listings tell you the lines, the the access you have through the lines. Mm -hmm. um, here are up to 500 Mbit. Um, sometimes we've seen 100 Mbit. You mean 50? Mbit. Uh, 50? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, we've also. Just getting out of scope here, link an article below where um, we could talk about internet in Germany and what the speed actually means, what yeah. it translates to. We could also maybe make a video about internet in Germany because yeah. it's... Yeah. But not right now? No, of um, course not. <laughs> so just be sure, just because it says here up to 50, you still need to buy then internet for up to 50 to actually access that okay. speed. All right. But let's go further down. Aha, uh -huh. here is actually proper because here it says the deposit, the caution ah. is three cold rents mm -hmm. as it should be. Nice. Um, the heating costs are included in the utilities mm. as it should be. Nice. So this is very clean, very proper. And aha, uh -huh, look at this. Ah. Rent for the garage. Stellplatz is another word for garage. It usually means outside. And it is an additional 75 euro ah. to the rent. Okay. So it's But not included. But it's also optional. You okay. don't have to take it. Mm -hmm. Usually. Sometimes they want you to take it just to make more money with it. Right. Um, but this is up to discussion again. Yeah. So this looks like a very nice listing. And uh, yeah, I would definitely try to get that. Yeah, that's an interesting The one. other inf information here, just again, translate to English if that's of interest to you, what kind of heating they use and everything, but that mm. is out of the yeah, scope. Yeah, fully renovated. Yeah. Yeah, super cool. All right, so let's go to one last listing, uh, which is, as you can see, from uh, Privat. Uh, mm. Von Privat means privately rented through... So you would, uh, the Mr. Frederick Döring here is uh, a, a landlord directly. Mm -hmm. um, so it's always good to know who you're dealing with as well. And the landlord is taking advantage of, uh, you know, marketing it that you don't pay any fee for a real estate agent. You wouldn't anyways, but yeah. he's just uh, using that for marketing reasons. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and let's see, aha, here he says, because he's a private landlord, you know, Mm. The Schufa, the Bonitätsauskunft is required. Wow, okay, so here I do actually have to provide yes. the Schufa. Okay. No chance here without. And as okay. you can see, internet here is faster than in the other. Oh, that's nice. The possibility for internet. Yeah. Yeah. And the rest is, I would say, pretty much the same. Yeah. Uh, this is three times uh, the code rent. We already calculated that, so that's okay. Yeah. Um, everything looks totally legit, and I would again go for it um, and is... contact uh, this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anbieter contact here. Bam. Super nice. Okay, so those are examples of what to look for when you're actually looking at the listings online. Yeah. All right, so let's say now we found the apartment that we like, we're content with what we found, and now we obviously need to send an application for it. Yes. So what documents are usually expected of me to provide for renting an apartment? Well, I would say you don't really send an application, but you um, you make an appointment to view the, mm, the, okay. the listing. Obviously, that if is, you're living in the country, That right? is the typical uh, step to take. Um, also, I mean, if you're not living in the country or during COVID times, um, public uh, online viewing um, has become also a thing, Yeah, that uh, you really see the place through camera mm -hmm. uh, and also meet you, introduce yourself through camera. Mm -hmm. But that would be the next step. Okay. Um, and for the listing, uh, for the viewing, you should bring documents, and those are a copy of your passport yes. or ID, whichever yes. 
um, is the number one document for you in Germany. Oh, parenthesis before that, we should obviously put all these documents that we're going to mention on a very nice folder <laughs> because you're going to most likely give that folder to the person when you apply, right? Yeah, most likely. If, if, they, if they're interested yeah, in you. If so. it gets to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> please continue. Sorry. So, <laughs> yeah. copy of, uh, of ID or passport. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and then... For sure, you will need to provide a proof of an income, um, and that can be in multiple ways. Um, ideally, it, if you've already been living in Germany for some time and you're employed, uh, it is the last three payslips. Okay. Um, or it could be if you are only moving here to start work, it could be the work contract mm -hmm. uh, that kind of shows the landlord you will be making consistent uh, consistently a certain amount of income. Mm -hmm. um, if you are a freelancer and you don't have a work contract, uh, it could be like a statement of your last year's overall income and expenses and profit statement. So like um, a bank statement pretty much? Or exactly. Like a, yeah. Or it could be literally a bank statement to show your liquidity and how much money you have in, mm -hmm. in your bank. Yeah. So obviously you need to prove to the lander that you are going to be able to pay the rent. Absolutely, somehow, yes. Right? I mean, without that, no chances of getting any, any yeah. apartment anywhere. <laughs> True. Okay. Yeah. Then yeah. number three. Number three is uh, we already touched that topic. Also, is the uh, famous Shufa record. Um, so your your credit score, uh, pretty much. Um, it is not always requested, as we just uh, saw also in the in the screencast. But um, having it just puts you, yeah, increases your likelihood of beating competitors for the flat and uh, and you getting it. Yeah, totally. We will release a whole video about like Shufa and how to apply for it and all these things in the future weeks. So stay tuned if you're interested in finding out information yes. about that. Um, but yeah, Shufa, definitely. Yes. Also, number four, you need to say that because <laughs> like a really big German word. No, let me try. It's a Mietkostenfreiheitsbescheinigung. Yeah, so good. Wow. So this is another piece of paper and this is not always requested. Um, that really depends on the listing and the person handling the listing. But uh, this beautiful paper, Mietkostenfreiheitsbescheinigung, <laughs> pretty much states, uh, is a document that you get from your previous landlord. And it states that you have been debt free with that landlord, that mm. you've always paid on time and you have no debts. So that's another measure of security um, that shows to your future landlord that you are a, reli a reliable tenant. Yeah. Also, in our guide in simplegermany.com, we have a link to an example of this Mietkostenfreiheitsbescheinigung yeah. <laughs> that you can check out to have a, like an idea of what yeah. it looks like. If you're coming from abroad um, and, and this thing doesn't exist there, you can literally ask your landlord to write a letter, like really just without a special format, stating that you've always been debt-free and paid on time. Yeah, ideally I mean, in English, right? Ideally in English, well, ideally in German. Ideally in German, <laughs> but next best thing, obviously, because yes. not all landlords speak yeah, German, Yeah, of right? course, of course. <laughs> Outside of, course. of Germany. <laughs> but uh, that's what it's about, just to yeah. prove that you're reliable and have always paid on time. Cool. Yeah. All right, number five on our list Number is... five is similar, is um, not always requested, it's just um, sometimes uh, requested, mm -hmm. um, especially if your proof of income is not that common or stable because this would be a, um, a guarantor so it, the german word is a mietbürgschaft mm, okay. um, very typical here that for example um, if you're a young professional or a student mm -hmm. and uh, it's the first time you're moving into your first flat that um, your parents are becoming a uh, guarantors basically if you cannot or don't meet um, the, the the payment deadline of your rent then your guarantor has to pay for you yeah so it's like a like a safe Safe net that if, exactly. if you don't pay, someone else will yeah. do it. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah. Number six is, what is that? Oh, an application form or letter? Correct. Yeah. So sometimes you actually have to write an application letter, um, just like in a job interview or, or a job application. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you have a, a, a viewing of the listing of an apartment, it's quite common that you will be handed a form that you should fill out. Uh, but sometimes you, you really need to write a letter. And again, this just helps the, the landlord or whoever is taking care of the listing to compare the, um, the people applying for it. Um, it really comes down to who is the most reliable and financially stable and who is the most likable um, that also meets or fits to the other renters in the house and the preferences of the landlord. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense in a way, right? Yeah. Um, and then the seventh, which is also not always requested. Yeah, it's not always requested. Actually, um, I would say it's the least requested, but it can be very, very beneficial, again, to maybe beat some other competitors, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're a foreigner, because that shows that you have an understanding of German culture. Um, to have uh, a 
private liability <laughs> insurance. Or the Haftpflichtversicherung, yes. as they call it. Yeah, oh God. Yeah, we should maybe do a whole video about the Haftpflichtversicherung. Yeah, we, we will probably, <laughs> yeah, most likely. So it's just a, a, a liability for a third party damages uh, in case you um, harm the apartment or um, harm the neighbors or whatsoever, that uh, you are covered and can actually pay for the damages um, instead of then the landlord having to pay, come up for it. Yeah, and the super cool thing about this insurance is uh, that it's not super expensive. Yeah. So for a very small monthly Five euro fee, month you're kind something. of yeah. covered for, for, for a lot of money. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. So as you can see, I would say five or six out of these seven documents uh, that we just mentioned are proof that you're reliable and are proof mm. that you are solvent. So this is a huge thing, trust. as you mentioned before, trust. Obviously, and yeah. um, because the tenants' rights are so, so strong, uh, a landlord really wants to um, think twice and, and be sure that the one hmm. he's letting into his house, letting into his house, um, that this person uh, is also a trustworthy person. Yeah, and for the documents, specific documents that you will need for the that one apartment that you want, most likely when you get in touch with the landlord or the retailer or whatever, they will let you know what are the required documents. That or they ask, want. really ask, hey, yeah. um, you know, now we're making the appointment for the listing, which documents would you like me to bring? Yeah. So you are prepared because exactly. there's nothing worse than going to a listing and not being prepared. Oh yeah, and if you go to a listing and you, you don't bring any documents, uh, you're pretty much out. Yeah. You will have to bring some documents with you. Yes. Yeah, and remember in a very nice folder that you can present and with copies of everything. So this is actually a beautiful transition to our next um, point in this guide is tips for applying for apartments. Yeah, so yeah. the number one, your favorite, I think this is your favorite tip, <laughs> is to be fast. It's to be fast, yes. Um, it's, it's really apartment hunting is the moment the listing comes online, you should pick up a phone and call the mm. number that's there. Um, don't bother writing an email unless you cannot reach anyone by phone mm. um, because um, speed is key. Um, and because it, it, it was, was the same case for me, um, I got this apartment because I was fast, uh, not just in calling, but also in visiting. Mm. Um, I came Im immediately the next day. Yeah, so that's so that's yeah. super super crucial. Yeah, yeah. Number two. Oh, by the way, if you're liking this kind of content, <laughs> right, and if you find this useful, make sure to hit that like button. Uh, this will help uh, to spread the word about this video, so yeah. other people that are looking for an apartment and have no clue how to do it in Germany, they can hopefully find this, and then it's helpful for them. That's our hope, at least. Yes. Well, I mean, likes help YouTube to spread the video. That's, yeah, pretty that's, much. That's the thing. That's how it goes. Anyway, so number two is to make a very good first impression. So yeah. actually, this has been something that I had to learn when I moved to Germany is that when you apply for an apartment, you're like pretty much it's like a job interview. Exactly. You if you're going to visit personally, right, you need to be well dressed, very polite, like a job interview, really confident. professional, yes. confident, uh, you know, show good manners, be prepared and all these things that you would also do in a job interview. Exactly. Um, if for some reason you're not going to go see that apartment physically, but through a video, whatever, also be professional there, have a nice background, dress nicely for that. Because at the end of the day, it all comes down to what we've been repeating over and over again is to give that trust to the landlord that, you know, I'm going to take care of your place. You can rely on me. I'm going to pay on time. You know, I'm a trustworthy yep. person. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. And that's also um, point number three is be pretty much brushing up your German. Hmm. Um, again, the landlord needs to trust you. And if you are just making an effort of speaking hmm. a little bit of German, it doesn't have to be fluent, but if you show the landlord, hey, I'm coming to, to this country, uh, I'm making effort, I want to learn more, and um, I'm super interested in also, uh, you know, getting to know the culture, that will go a long way. Yes, I agree. Actually, and here you don't, like you already mentioned, you don't need to speak fluently. If you memorize like a few sentences just to introduce yourself, let the landlord know, hey, my German is not good. Um, I would rather have this in English or, you know, like to to break the ice in that sense. If you say all these things in German, even if it's not perfect German, that already like breaks the ice and, and gives the expectation of the other person. Okay, so I can either A speak slower or if the landlord or person speaks English, they will do so. And so far for me, it has worked great to be as an icebreaker. Um, obviously there are exceptions, right? There are people that then are probably gonna become even more rude, but generally speaking, it's a great icebreaker. Yes. So again, you don't have to like know, like speak German fluently, just memorize a few sentences to give that good impression. Yeah, exactly. Um, number four is what we just said earlier, have all your documents ready, yes. prepared in a nice folder in the right order. Um, so that really um, helps a, a future landlord decide on you um, and just, you know, look through and say like, ah, this is all clean. 
um, is another impression thing. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, also, number five on our list is that if you're looking, if you have a pet, obviously you're going to be looking for apartments that are pet friendly, right? So we would recommend not to bring your pet on the first visit, unless your pet is super well trained um, and is actually the icebreaker. Super cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, uh, we would recommend to not bring the pet. Yeah. Um, yeah, and just clarify with the owner that you can actually bring a pet, and then when you move in, you can take your pet with you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the last one is uh, actually a very important one: be patient. Um, apartment hunting takes time, uh, takes a lot of patience. You will not most likely get the first, second, third apartment, or you're lucky and you get the first. I mean, it can be yeah, either or. It can be either but or. But just know that when you start the process, um, that you bring time. Yeah. That you also don't look for an apartment last minute, um, and that you just know. To be patient. Yeah, exactly. And this guide is not meant to scare you or anything. You just need to know all the information. And at the end of the day, everyone achieves this, right? Yes. Everyone is able to find an apartment. Yeah. We have never met anyone, as hard as it's been, uh, that has to move abroad uh, because they weren't able to find a place to live in Germany. So it's doable. You just have to be aware of all this, right? So that leads to then, okay, so then I found the apartment. I applied for the apartment, right? I get, made a good impression. The landlord likes me, says, okay, you can have the apartment if you want. And the next thing they're probably going to send me is a contract. Yes. So what should I pay attention in this contract is a big question. Because obviously the contract is going to get in, in German. Arrive in German right? Yes. <laughs> and it's going to be bureaucratic, very legal German. That yes. even for Germans is like, okay, let me read this three times. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So how do I know, like, uh, how, how do I check this? How do I know what it should have? So let's go, like, first what it should have maybe, right? Yes, exactly. So... There are, there is not one type of rental contract, right? Mm. Um, I mean, there is um, example uh, contracts, um, but each landlord or each um, property management uh, agency will have their own type. Mm -hmm. um, so we are just giving you a general advice here uh, and certain things that should be part of it. Mm -hmm. And those are definitely the duration of the contract. That being said, it should have the starting date hmm. of when you um, yeah, start renting the apartment. But it shouldn't have an end date. Exactly. And the Unless reason there are exceptions, but wait. Please. There are exceptions, <laughs> yes. However, um, legally, it is illegal to uh, have a limited uh, rental contract, to offer a limited rental contract. So all contracts for rent should be open-end. Um, again, it goes back to this whole thing, Germans rent an apartment sometimes for life, you know, for a lifetime. Hmm. They treat it as their own. Um, so limited contracts are only um, allowed if the landlord has a real reason for it. So for example, if the landlord says, hey, I can only rent you this place for two years because after those two years, um, I will need to use it myself. So it's personal use. Or I will sell it. Hmm. If that is the reason for a limited contract, then he really, or he or she, <laughs> really needs to sell it. They can't just you know, claim and then not act on it. The reason why we're pointing this out is that, um, especially in bigger cities, especially in Berlin, I would say, limited rental contracts are a thing. They're very, very common. And why do they do that? Hmm. Because obviously the rental prices are increasing like every year. And if uh, a landlord can offer a limited rental contract and in a year you get kicked out and someone new comes in, the new person will pay more rent than you do. Of so course, this yeah. is, you know, the whole reason why it's illegal because um, they were just, yeah, they're just doing it for their own benefit. Although I must argue it's not necessarily just a Berlin thing because when I first moved to Dusseldorf, the landlord that I rented my shared apartment with, she had limited contracts. And actually this is what she would do. She would l let you rent the apartment for a year. You would have to move out or, um, or have another contract for a year with a little bit higher rent. Um, and then, but it would be a limited time. And then for the next person, she would charge more money. And this is unfortunately taking advantage of not knowing, right? Because, um, of course, Jen was happy to have an apartment yeah. um, and didn't know better. And this is not, um, we're not saying don't take a limited contract. We just want to know your, want you to know your rights. Yeah. It's your choice. It's, it's your, um, your decision, but this is the law. And I mean, this is yeah. how it should be. And like you, like it, just because it's illegal doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Exactly. So it's very common, not very common, but it can happen that some contracts do have this end date. Just be aware that that's just not okay. Um, and be aware that maybe then this should just be for um, a, limited time. a limited time and <laughs> like look for a proper place after that. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Okay, yeah. so we have this stuff with the when does the contract start. Then obviously we need to have on the contract like how much is a monthly rent. Exactly. So there we need to have obviously the Kaltmiete, which is the rental price. 
uh, and the uh, the price with the Warmiete, mm -hmm. uh, so with the Nebenkosten, and the Nebenkosten, the utilities, need to be specified what they are. Yes. So you need to have a list of, okay, the Nebenkosten include, in this case, heating, um, what else, water, uh, trash pickup, and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, it should be as detailed as possible, um, just because... Uh, utilities are easier to increase in price depending on your consumption hmm. uh, and you should have an idea that that's what's getting increased and not your actual rent. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, okay. So that definitely needs to be part of the contract. Number three is the deposit amount. Correct. Yeah, I mean obviously you want in writing how much you're paying up front yeah. that you also have the right to get back when you move out. Yeah, make sure that is there, right? Because obviously you're not going to give, because as we saw also deposits can be like thousands of euros and yes. then what if it's not there? Oh, oh you never gave me a caution. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> the next one is uh, pet rules. Mm -hmm. So if you are renting an apartment that uh, allows pets, be sure that it says it in the contract. Yes, that's, that's pretty it. much the rule. <laughs> <laughs> Number five is a list of all furniture and appliances, right? Yeah. So uh, this actually is more applicable, obviously, if the apartment is furnished. Yes. So you get uh, like a list of, for example, if in the kitchen there are already dishes and whatnot, that also should be counted. Also How called the forks, these... the knives, you know, anything that uh, you don't own, so you didn't pay for it. Yeah. But that is really a part of the equipped um, furnished flat that you rent. Yeah, exactly. So that's also that. Number six is the notice period. Yes, which traditionally is three months. Oh, That's everything a, in Germany is three months to cancel. Most things in Germany is three months to cancel, yes. A lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just check that it's that it's listed there. And if it's a, some, for some whatever reason, six months or something like that, just, you know, ask why and, and ask to reduce it to, uh, to, to three, three months. Yeah. Um, that is uh, very common. And if it's less than three months, uh, ask yourself, ooh, um, that also means that the landlord could kick you out um, with, a, with a shorter uh, notice period ah. if he has a proper reason for it. Um, yeah, which, without a proper reason. Yeah, they can't which not just really. because they want to kick you out. Yeah, yeah. cool. Exactly. Number seven actually is the house rules. So by house rules, we, we mean, for example, like we are lucky that in the building that we live in, uh, there's a superintendent and he takes care of taking out the trash, cleaning the staircase uh, and other maintenance, little maintenance stuff in the building. Mm -hmm. However, we've also had friends that they are the ones that actually need to take care of these things. So there's like a like a schedule in the building where uh, each one has maybe once a month or yeah. once every two months. They're the ones responsible for taking out the trash or cleaning the staircase and other stuff. So the house rules need to be clear in the contract what you are expected to be doing outside of your apartment right, to take care of the building and what is actually taken care of for you. Exactly. For example, um, for, for this place here, we um, in my part of my contract that I signed back in the day is that I need to grant access to the chimney sweeper once a year because it's uh, the top floor and uh, this is the only way he can access the chimney. Yeah, so. and he comes every year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we give him access, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Correct, yeah. Then, um, of course, uh, very important is uh, to um, be knowledgeable of the legal increments of um, rental price. Yes. Um, and that can be part of the contract. It doesn't have to be. Um, but if it is, know what is uh, allowed. And it is totally okay that the landlord will tell you up front, look, this is the rental price this year. However, the next year I will increase it. The maximum amount um, rental prices are allowed to be increased over a period of three years is 20%. Mm -hmm. So let's say 6% per year would be okay. And there's nothing you can do about it other than not accepting it and not renting the place. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if uh, the landlord did choose to increase in the first three years uh, 20%, the next three years uh, the landlord cannot um, mm -hmm. increase the price at all. So there is like then a waiting period of three years after which then again the rental price could be increased. Um, it's also very common in contracts that it's like a, a negative um, statement. Uh, statement, exactly. That it says, we agree that there won't be um, a rental price increase in the first year to three years, hmm. something like that. And then afterwards, it's not specified. Um, there can be no comment on a rental price incre increments in the contract. And that is pretty much good for you because then the landlord can only increase with a real reason. For example, mm -hmm. that um, they uh, put a new heating system in the house because the other one was old. And obviously that is a big investment that he can then lay on out to um, the tenants. But by the house, you mean the building, right? Yes. Yeah, like the whole building. So yes. for everyone, yeah. it would increase the rent as well, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, number nine on the list is the number of keys that you're going to get, yes. right? And that's pretty straightforward. If it says two, very straightforward, sure you get two. <laughs> but very important, yes, yeah. because uh, changing locks in an apartment, a big apartment building, it is very expensive. Mm -hmm. Yes, very expensive. Um, number ten is the payment method. How are you going to pay the rent? Yes. pretty much, right? So the rental contract should state the bank account of uh, the landlord, and uh, you are expected to then wire, um, like the bank transfer, the rent on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. um, it's either beginning or end of the month. I mean, that you can also discuss with the landlord or, or see what the contract says. And uh, just be sure, because paying on time is super important, to put up a standing order in your bank account um, and have that, uh, you know, be two to three days before the rent is expected to be paid because then you're on the safe side that it will definitely arrive on time. Yeah, definitely. So um, as we said, there is no like one blueprint for a contract. However, the German Association of Tenants Der Mieterbund. <laughs> they have created a really cool example as a baseline where they have a German contract, mm -hmm. um, rental contract. And next to it in comparison is the English one. Yes. So this is perfect for you to have a baseline of what a contract looks like, what it says, how it's worded and everything. So you can take that as a baseline. When you receive your contract, you can compare it to that. Um, and if you are lucky enough to know someone that speaks German fluently, you can always give that contract to them to have a, a second, second pair of eyes. Yeah. Uh, we say four eyes are better than, than two. In our case, it's six eyes because of my glasses. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's always good if someone uh, can look over it as well. Yeah. But anyways, this baseline, again, is in our guide, the, the links to, to this comparison um, contract. Uh, it's a good way to start, I think. Yeah, I agree. Super cool. So now let's say then I got my contract. I am super happy with my contract. I signed my contract. So I have a date that I can move in, I mm -hmm. prepare my stuff. And what are the things that I need to do when I move into an apartment? Well, before you would actually get the keys, you need to pay the deposit. Ah, true. So that is kind of like the, the pre-step. Okay, that and would actually give me the green light, I would say, to exactly. move in, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And once that happened and the landlord's like, yay, okay, all checks out, here are your keys, happy moving. <laughs> yeah. um, before you actually move in or move any of your stuff in, um, take your phone and take pictures and videos of pretty much every corner of the apartment. Yeah. And again, this is not to scare you, but it is super um, good to have such a record for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. The simplest as what happened with me um, here is that unfortunately my landlord passed away and the daughter took over, mm -hmm. um, which is totally, you know, okay, this can happen. But of course the daughter, my current landlord, has no idea what this actually looked like when I moved in because she yeah. wasn't involved, right? So those are things that can happen. Um, obviously, also to protect yourself in case someone is claiming you did something when you have proof. No, this was already this way when I moved in. Which, funny enough, actually, we met a friend recently and she was telling us when they moved to the apartment, they realized that there was a lot of scratches on the windows. Mm -hmm. So apparently the person before had cleaned the windows with some sort of rough material. Yeah. So you see all these like circle scratches. And the landlord didn't realize she well, claims. we don't know, right? Don't but know, she right? said, oh, oh, scratches? I don't, I haven't seen, seen scratches. So because they inspected the apartment when they moved in, they took pictures, they were able to demonstrate, look, this is how the windows look like. So when we Please add out. to the contract that the scratches yeah. were here beforehand. Exactly. Yeah. So that's an example of, of, of what can happen. Yeah, right? so to exactly. Look out for. Oh, number two is the famous Anmeldung. <laughs> we, the famous Anmeldung. Yeah, we, have, we will create a video also of the Anmeldung and how to do the process and everything. Just know that it's pretty much registering your address in the official city um, how do office. office. Yep. <laughs> so they know um, that you live there and the Anmeldung is pretty much the, the beginning of your life in Germany, we like yes. to call it. Because it triggers so many things, uh, bureaucratically obviously, that are important for you to settle into Germany. Yep. For sure. Yeah. It's a, you need to do it as soon as possible because without it, your life here will um, be a lot more difficult. Yes. Yeah. I don't think you would be able to do a lot of things without Yeah, them. I agree. Yeah, but we will go to Check the out the other video. <laughs> yeah. We'll be released in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> so, okay. Number three is the letterbox, right? Yes. Um, be sure that uh, the name on the letterbox and the doorbell uh, gets changed to your uh, last name, especially. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes it's your responsibility. For us, it was, again, the superintendent. Sometimes it's the landlord, the property management. Um, whoever is in charge, find out who and let them know um, to please do that as soon as possible. Um, right. Because you will uh, receive a lot of um, official mail, yes. um, <laughs> especially after you did the Anwendung, and you need to receive that. It cannot um, happen that uh, they cannot find your letterbox. Yeah. If for some reason you're not able to put your last name on the letterbox, mm -hmm. maybe it's a rental, a super short term rental apartment that you're going to use for a few months, um, then you can always, how is it that in the, when you put your address, you should put the name of the person on the letterbox. Yes. And in German, the acronym is 
Sie well, it's, it's, it's a CO, it's a cared over, okay. uh, cared off. Um, in German it would be zu Händen, it would be um, z.hd, mm -hmm. but CO is also understood here. Okay. Um, so then, important, have the name of the person on letterbox first, then your name uh, as a cared over, and then the address. Yeah, exactly. So then you guarantee that the, the mail, mail will reach you. Exactly. Yes. Okay, number four, which is actually the funnest part of them all, is to get your internet contact. <laughs> and I mean that in the most sarcastic way, because <laughs> actually you should do this as soon as possible. Yes. Because, oh, Germany, with this bureaucratic processes, this can take up to two weeks or more. To oh, actually I would get say four internet. to six weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it's, it, it takes uh, a long time. And why does it take a long time? Well, we, well, maybe we'll go into detail in a different video. So depending on the lines uh, to the flat that you're renting, um, maybe even a technician needs to come out to activate the line. Yeah. Um, and even if not, it takes time between you actually buying a contract online and it becoming a reality. A reality, exactly. So don't think, ah, internet, I'll take care next week. Really try to do it as soon as possible because that will save you time on waiting for it. Exactly. So take, make sure to start that as soon as possible. Which, by the way, in my case, when I wanted to hire internet, I needed my Anmeldung to yes. be yeah. able to do you, that. You cannot do it without um, being registered. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that's, you know, one, one comes after the other. So if number... you're looking for internet providers, check the links below where we also have written a guide about it. Yes, exactly. Okay, number five on the list is two. Sign up with an electricity provider. Yes. So don't be scared. By law, you are, you will have electricity at home, right? Yeah. Um, I think you told me that the only reason where they would cut the electricity off is if you haven't paid in I don't know how long. Um, but it's obviously your legal right to have an electricity yes. in the apartment. So when you move in, you will have electricity. Um, every city has their um, uh, Grundversorger, so the mm -hmm. basic provider of electricity. Uh, however, um, we highly suggest that you still sign up either with this Grundversorger um, to make sure that you only pay from when you moved in. Yes. Because um, otherwise it could potentially happen that you will still pay for the previous time uh, in case, for example, the, the previous tenant didn't deregister. Hmm. Um, or you can choose directly to choose, you can choose directly to choose, ah, beautiful. You can um, select a different electricity provider that will actually save you some money. Um, I mean, it's, it's very individual. Uh, it's not a thing you have to do, but we highly suggest it um, to save money pretty much. Yeah, definitely. Number six, which is an optional thing, and this really depends on how many things of value you have or how valuable your things are is to get a home contents insurance. Mm -hmm. So I read this analogy once that a home contents insurance is that if you take your apartment, turn it upside down, whatever falls is what's pretty much is insured, kind of, right? Yeah. And if you, you know, if something gets stolen or gets destroyed for whatever reason, because a home contents basically protects you from theft, fire, water damage, yeah. um, any of those things. Uh, if you can repurchase these things out of your own pocket, don't even worry about insurance. Hmm. If they are more valuable than what you could rebuy, you can consider it. Also yeah. here, um, this is just a, a suggestion, not a must have. Exactly, yeah. And number seven is, uh, actually this is not a thing you need to do. Well, you do, you need to be aware of the fact yes. that you're gonna receive a lot of mail. <laughs> yes, a lot of mail and a few letters there are actually required to take action. Hmm. Um, so much, uh, for example, the um, letter from the Beitrag service, which yes. is the uh, broadcasting fee you mentioned earlier that you should plan in your budget. And when you get this beautiful letter, you need to register with them and um, pay up. And exactly. again, we will do another, we have done another video on that already. We will link that up here. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the other stuff, right, regarding your health insurance, social security number, like you will receive everything bureaucratic will come through snail mail in Germany. So be sure to pay attention because uh, you will get a lot of mail. And don't just throw the mail away. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, I would recommend take pictures and save them in either if you have like cloud storage or in a hard drive or something. And as a good now German resident, be sure to buy like a binder and then you can put all your papers there because trust me, you never know when you need these papers again. Yes. I received, for example, I received mail when I first got here and I just put it in a safe place. And then years later, I was like, uh, I'm like, Jen, where is your social yeah, security number? Yeah, but it was number. there. I didn't know, <laughs> but it was there. That's what I mean. Yeah. Why do you go like this? It was there. I saved it. I just didn't know when I was going to need it. And I turned out that I needed it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no, like, why do you go in disappointment? <laughs> Very true. <laughs> anyway, so this wraps up our uh, ultimate guide of renting an apartment uh, in Germany and everything that you need to know. Um, we know this has been a bit longer than our usual videos. However, again, as you can see, this is such a 
in-depth topic um, that we didn't want to brush over. We hope this is helpful to you. Again, please um, like the video if it is, so other people can also get this helpful resource. And if you like, you can also subscribe or buy us a coffee. Uh, we put the link below, which we most likely will use for a beer, um, <laughs> to support the channel and us uh, to yeah, keep creating helpful content. Yeah, totally. So I guess we'll see you next Monday. Until then, cheers! cheers.